Welcome back to another episode of the Man Up Podcast. It's episode 34. Back at it with Jaden and uh, Max, as Next usual. Man Up Podcast. Next I just, Up I just said that, though. You said Man Up. You've man been up. doing that for the past three episodes. Man Up, yeah, you keep saying that. Anyways, man Next up. Man Up Podcast, episode 34. Before we even get started, subscribe to the channel, like the video. All my social media is out there on the top. If you could give us a follow and everything, it would be very appreciated, though. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, working the last 10 number one overall picks that Jazz was a few days ago. Uh, Victor Wimriyama was selected. First overall, so we're going to look back in history and try to rank the last 10 number one overall picks. And then we got the CP3, um, Jordan Poole trade. We have the uh, Chris Porzingis to the Celtics, Smart to the Memphis, that three-team trade, Ty Jones to the Wizards. We have landing spots for the top free agents. Free agency starts on July 1st, so we're going to get ahead of that and try to predict the landing spots for the uh, top free agents. we got six names. And then we're going to head over to NFL. The first time we talked about NFL in a minute, to be honest. Uh, we're going to probably have to get back on top of that, but we got uh, over-under totals, over-order win totals for the NFC East, and then we were going to finish off with a wide receiver tier list. Yes, we've done a wide receiver tier list before. It was without Jaden, and I didn't really like how it ended, so uh, we're going to redo that. But um, before, you know, we even get into it, you know, I got to ask how our day been going. You know, I just got off work. Um, pretty good day. Got off work early. I'm out tomorrow, so uh, I feel like it's, it's going to be a good episode. It's going to be a good night, though. How y'all doing? Cool, bro. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, we can get into it, though. So we're going to rank the last 10 number one overall picks. He's going back to 2014 with Andrew Wiggins. He's going to be the last player um, that we, we're talking about. So, uh, Jaden, if you want to go ahead. So you, you can go ahead. And, I, you know, we just, we just feed off you. Okay, okay. So so we're going with my list for sure, for sure. Yeah, we can go with your list for sure. Uh, go at one. Like, rank right. them. Like, okay, go ahead. So this is my list of the past, uh, the past ten first overall picks. Uh, there's a lot of people that can be interchangeable, uh, like the second one, but I'm just gonna get into it. So the first one we got Victor. Uh, we're doing this as prospects. Victor is seven four, has guard skills, a uh, great rim protector. I feel like that's a no brainer. But you guys agree with that? Yes. Yes. All right. At number two, this is a this is a huge toss up, but I'm gonna go with my boy Zion Williamson. Uh, he literally put college basketball on his back. I don't know if you guys remember. Um, he had Barack Obama come to his game. Even the game he blew out his shoe. That was unfortunate. Uh, he had stars around him, RJ, Cam Reddish, and he was still able to produce able to produce 23 points, uh, damn near two blocks, nine rebounds per game. Uh, his playmaking wasn't as good as this next play, This next player. But he was, also went to March Madness. Um Oh, what did what did they uh end that year? The final, they lost in the final four. Nope, they lost in the Elite Eight to Michigan State. Yeah, yeah, and they lost in the Elite Eight against Michigan State. So, and I I feel like when it when it's that close, I'm gonna I'm gonna put winning. You know, I feel like that ha- that has to matter. With my third um the third guy, I have Ben Simmons. Uh, I know uh, Latif is gonna have problems with this again. Ben Simmons was compared to LeBron James. He was an elite defender, an elite passer an elite finisher. He couldn't shoot, but the reason why I don't have him over Zion is because first, his team sucked, and um, I just don't think he's a better player. <laughs> Respectfully. Okay, so with my fourth, I'm going to have to go with Andrew Wiggins. He was deemed as the Maple Jordan. I don't know if you guys remember that. He was very athletic. Yep. Um, and I just think he's a better pick than the rest of these people on my, on my list. Would you guys agree with him at four? Yeah, yeah I think Wiggs. All right, um, this is another toss-up. I'm going to have Markel Fultz at my number five spot. Markel Fultz was literally just a demon in college. Big body, 6'4", put great pressure on the rim. That Latif, that's, that's a Latif saying I incorporated into my basketball talks. Put great pressure on the rim and was a 40% shooter from the three. His team in college wasn't good at all, but he was a elite prospect. I say a lot of people are saying Scoot is – is the best point guard since Derrick Rose, prospect wise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to say Markel Fultz is. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him that. Now for my sixth spot, I'm going with Cade. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really high on Cade. It, it was nothing with his game. I just thought that Cade's draft Cade's draft class wasn't weak. It was just top heavy. But I felt like I don't know. But I, I have Cade right there. He could really do, he could do everything on the offensive end. I like his pace. I like his size. Uh, he can shoot the ball very well. But I don't know. I just wasn't as high on K. But I'm gonna put him there um, for my seventh spot. No, is this what is this? My sixth or seventh? Seventh. Seven. 
For my seventh spot, I have Anthony Edwards. Didn't see any holes in his game. He was a great offense scorer when he played defense. And, no, he was actually a pretty good defender in college. Yeah. He he was good on, on both ends, so I'm going to have to give that to Anthony Edwards. I know this may be a little bit low, but with my eighth spot, eighth spot, I have Carl Anthony Towns, to be honest. I don't remember. Carl Anthony Towns doesn't really strike my memory, so – that's why I'm putting him this low. He could be a little bit higher, not much higher. I guess you could put him over and possibly K, but I don't even think he goes over K. If you put him over up a spot, I think he'll just go over Anthony Edwards. And then I have Paolo, and after that, I have DeAndre Aiden. I mean, it's a pretty solid list. It's like when you're gauging number one picks, it's kind of hard to nitpick, but – before we even, I even get into why what I disagree with, Jaden. Let me go through them. Just yeah, like through a whole entire. All right. So do you want me to say for num- number one, number two? Yes. And say the whole names too, please. All right. Number one, I have Victor Wembanyama. Number two, I have Zion Williamson. Number three, I have Ben Simmons. Number four, I have Andrew Wiggins. Number five, I have Markel Fultz. Number six, I have Kay Cunningham. Number seven, I have Anthony Edwards. Number eight, I have Carl Anthony Towns. Number nine, I have Paolo Bencaro. And number 10, I have DeAndre Aiden. Now, the only problem I have with your list, the only big problem I have with your list, Jaden, is Zion over Ben. Like, that's kind of crazy to me. Because, like, come on, let me let me just explain this about Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons was the next coming to LeBron. We're talking about 6'10", elite defender, elite playmaker, elite finisher, 19, 11, and 5. The first time we've seen that in 35 years. He was one of the best prospects we've seen in the last 30 years. He's 16, could do it all. That's why I have him over Zion. I think he was a better prospect than Zion. I think he had good height, not great height, but not like not like Zion's height. That was like untouchable almost. Victor only is Victor's the only person that got better hype than him. Player for player, give me Ben Simmons out of high school, out of college. I feel like he could do it all on the court. He was more impactful on the court. I feel like Zion, Zion was, hold on, Zion was a good help side defender. He was very athletic. He got a lot of blocks just like that. He was a good playmaker for, for his position. He scored a lot, especially in the paint. He was crazy in the paint. He was a better finisher than uh, Ben Simmons in the paint. But Ben Simmons shot like around 70% in the paint when he was in, in high school. You want to talk about, oh, his team wasn't good. Well, he played for LSU. He didn't go to Duke, so I don't know what you want me to do. Um... I don't know, like he made the tournament. Like he played for LSU again. Like I don't know what you tell me. They were a bubble team. They almost made the tournament. Um, you talking about some like they went to the Elite Eight? That really doesn't phase me um, because one, like I said, he went to LSU. I'm not even going to explain on that. He went to LSU. This man was supposed to be the next LeBron James. So for me, Zion was to be the next LeBron James, but Benson was actually the next LeBron James. Like he was the most similar we've seen to LeBron James. Like without Wimby, I could really, I feel, I really feel like Ben Simmons is the Second best prospects we've seen since Wimby. Now this, this I mean since LeBron. This this is where I'm gonna have to disagree with you here. So when we look at field goals attempted, um, yeah, f- field goals attempted. Zion attempted 13 per game, right? Okay. And mm-hmm. he was hyper efficient. Yeah. Ben Ben Simmons averaged 12. Uh, he shot 56 percent from the from the field goal range, and Zion shot 68 percent. So I it's I actually say that Zion is a better defender. Um, wait, wait. Not, I mean, not, <laughs> oh, I'm about to say. <laughs> okay. I, I, argue, I arguably say that Zion Zion is a better finisher. Now, when it comes to defense, I believe Ben Simmons, of course, was a better on ball defender. I don't think Zion was put in positions to be that great of a. Uh, an on ball defender, he was kind of put in in like more help side situations. That's why he was averaging two blocks per game again, like you said, with the athleticism. You can give me a uh, playmaking, of course, he's a better playmaker, but Ben Simmons only averaged five assists. Uh, Zion Williamson only averaged two. So, again, I'll, I'll let you he's I'll 16. You. All right, cool, cool. I'll let you have that, but again, as a prospect, hype matters. Like, I, I understand, like, him being 6'10", he's able to move his feet well, but hype matters. That goes into being a prospect. So when you put that all together, I think you have to put Zion Williamson over Ben Simmons. I'm not going to lie. So I think Ben Simmons' hype, like, it was crazy, too. It was crazy. We'll be honest. Yes, it, was, it was What? It was, it was nowhere, it was, it was was nowhere near Zion. I'm sorry. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't think nowhere. I think nowhere near Zion is a stretch. I feel like he was, he was a crazy hype. Like, I think the gap between hype 
and then the gap between player is like I think the gap the, the gap is bigger between player. I honestly feel like that. Like I feel like Zion, oh. I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like Ben Simmons, bro. Like as a prospect, we talking about prospect. Like he was elite at three things: finishing, passing, finish, finishing, passing, defending. Zion was elite at one thing, and that was finishing. He was. Uh, oh, you want to say scoring? No, because he can't really score outside the paint. So he was elite at one thing, bro. He was elite at one thing. He was hyper efficient. Um, he got to the rim a lot. You know, he was a good. He was a good playmaker. Um, the assist numbers don't show that. We all know Zion, Zion was a better playmaker. 30, 34 percent from three with, Stop. with two Stop. attempts a game. Stop. Two attempts a game. Stop. How many? How many? How Stop. Many, how many did what? What did Ben Simmons average? He averaged 0. 0.1 three uh, three points per attempt yeah, a game. Yeah, 0. 0. 0.1 and shot thirty three percent. All right, that's so one percent less. Point one. You need to shoot. So uh, if you have, to, if we go scoring, then you you then have to go with Zion. I can't. You can't say that. You don't feel like. You don't feel like. I didn't, well, obviously, I said he, I, no. I didn't say he was. I didn't say Zion was a uh, Zion was a better scorer. I didn't say. I didn't never say he did, wasn't. I said he wasn't elite at scoring because his game was one dimensional. It was get to the rim. Um. So he had a midi. He had a midi. Anyways, uh, but, uh, so when I'm talking about Ben Simmons, bro, especially like you want to talk about bring up the level of team he played with, I feel like it was, if Ben Simmons was on Duke, they would have made the final four. You switch, you switch some players out, they would have made the final four too, bro. I feel like no, personally, no, no, because I, 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 RJ can't shoot, uh, Ben Simmons. I mean, like, what's R- RJ was a decent shooter in college? He's a, I mean, is it crazy to say RJ kind of he was not Ben Simmons' role? He was, not I, well, wait, wait, yeah, so for, for fit, probably Zion better, yeah, but fit, for fit, Zion better. They needed a player like Zion because they had Trey Jones around like uh, they had Trey Jones around the point, and you also had RJ to play mate. Cam Cam Reddish was a shooter. They needed someone who was not called on to bring the ball up. I don't think Ben Simmons would have fit that team at all. That would have been a nasty. Yeah. Play. Okay. So yeah, the fit would have been bad. But I'm saying like I, if you put um, Ben Simmons with that, those level of players, what I mean, like give you give him someone like an average twenty points per game. Give him Cam Reddish. I'll give you down there fourteen points per game on good. Uh, well, he was actually inefficient in college, but could have hit a three, could defend, bro. He would have, he would have took his team to the final four too. Like he, he just had a, a lot worse I roster. Oh, Zion, elite eight, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I think like I, I think more, we talked about this too. We talked about this too beforehand. Uh, like Duke was the best team. Like you can go back and look at all the 2019 teams going into the tournament. Duke was number one. They were the best team in the country. Other teams lost game. That's fine. You said, "Oh, uh, whatever." They they had trouble with Louisville. Cool. Everyone's got an off game. You play so many games in college. It's all young players. Everyone's inexperienced. Like you get those nights, right? They literally came from a class. They flew all the way here. They had a test that morning. Like stuff happens. They're still kid. You know what I'm saying? Like you're still kid. I'm just saying. Like there's so much more time to mess up in college because you have so many more things going on in your head. And when you get to the league, you get paid to play basketball. You got so many other things going on for college basketball, right? Like. Literally, like, it's just how it goes, right? And same thing for high school. Like, you can get a lapse in high school because you got other stuff, you got other stuff going on. But like, literally, that Duke team was. I remember watching UCF, and like, you would have random people in the stands with whatever jersey on. Like, people just hated Duke because they were good. Like, they didn't get near the amount of hype that. Uh, sorry, they they got close to, but not enough. Uh, hype than that undefeated Kentucky team. That's probably the most hype I've ever seen growing up. Like that team. Okay. Was hype, but that Duke okay, team is a close second. And like get okay, so let me know we're gonna start talking about some like when you what does it have to do with uh them being prospects? I just want to know. I'm, I'm just saying, like, overall, like that team was amazing, and like Zion was the cornerstone of that team. Zion was the best part about that team. I'm not gonna lie, no one tuned into a single LSU basketball game. That's so not true. Think, Why are you lying? Did you ever watch an LSU basketball game? Yes, game? what are you talking about? I highly doubt that. I'm a Ben Simmons guy. Why don't I watch Ben Simmons? What are, what are we talking about? I, I just think that's how it goes. You watch highlights and you watch the clips. Right? I watched I didn't watch it. I, watched I never highlights. watched the Markel Fultz watch Washington game. game. Did you? No, no, I didn't. I, I, was, I wasn't a Markel Fultz guy, though. I wasn't a Markel Fultz guy. It's just that type of irrelevance, right? Like, I'm sorry, like, LSU's oh, a great okay. school. They're good, but like, their basketball teams never, like, they had a couple runs, but LSU's not known for being a basketball school. I'm not going to go. Washington has great products in the NBA, but I'm not going to go turn on a, a Washington game. Like what Jaden's saying, hype has to play in to the prospect. Like that's how it goes. I'm sorry, Wemby's there because he's a great prospect, and I, I guess the I don't know what how much hype you how much more hype can you get there being compared to the next LeBron James? You don't hype up a bomb. Like but you it don't hype up a bomb. Like I'm sorry, like you don't hype up someone because they don't have uh, any potential, right? You hype up someone because they have potential because they've shown that they're uh insane build because they can play basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sorry, Zion had the most. 
Zion, it's LeBron's the most hype of our era, right? Of the past, I don't know, all time. I'm just gonna say for the past since 2000, LeBron's one, and I think Wemby's Wemby's two, but Zion's coming up there on hype on three, and I think that plays a big part of being a prospect. I get it. You're saying, and who is four? Who is four? Huh? Who's four? Andrew Wiggins. Loki Lonzo. Lonzo have more hype than uh, Ben Simmons. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know about that. I feel like that's, that's not true. Not, that's Lonzo, not, Lonzo might have more hype than Ben Simmons. Okay, okay. So I want to one go through the rest of your list, uh, Jaden. If I remember correctly, Cat yeah. is definitely too low. Cat was one of the ones coming out of Kentucky. He was definitely uh, like, like yeah, he was one of the ones. I'll say, I'll say one thing. I I switch. I'm the opposite with Jaden. I was a bigger Cade person than I was Markel. So I put Cade a spotter. I think I put Cade a spot higher above Markel. I That's thought Cade was a dog. I watched him at Oklahoma State. Like in that tournament, I picked him to go. You watch Oklahoma State? I, I what? Watched, I watched college basketball. Yeah, he watches college. I watched college, I, basketball. I watched college basketball. I don't know I what we're talking Max, about. Max, I feel like Max knows the most about college basketball. Thank you. Appreciate it. I watched college basketball. Um, no, I liked Oklahoma State a lot. And like that was uh, right around their time where they weren't eligible to make the tournament or like it was the year after he was there. So that was like kind of. Was he going to stay at Oklahoma State? He did stay, so it was, I was trying to watch him. Um, sorry, hold on one second. My things got kicked out. But, uh, yeah, for me, I had K at five, too. I had K over Fox. I think he was a better prospect than him. Uh, six, nine, six, seven, six, eight, pro- like closer to six, nine. He was in comparisons like uh, Jason Tatum that could facilitate. Like He was six, uh, six eight, a good defender, a great playmaker. He had a great command of offense. He could shoot. Um, he had an amazing feel for the game, amazing pace. He was good in the pick and roll. He was good in isolation. So I, I had Kate, I had Kate at um at, at five. I had false at six. I had cat uh over I had cat over Paulo. Um I had cat I had Paulo over Ant too. I feel like Ant had some certain amount of questions when he came to the draft. Like, yes, he was a very good prospect. He had a little holes in his game, but his scoring was kind of like inefficient. He didn't shoot that well from three. I very I vaguely remember him like being a uh inefficient prospect. Um when I when I when I looked at Ant, so he was, a, I think, he was in a weaker draft class too than some of these other players as well. Uh, with Lamelo being two, and then no, James Wiseman being two, uh, Lamelo being three. So, um, then after that, kind of like a little bit fell off a little bit. Um, but yeah, man, I, I think so. I got Ant at nine. I got Paolo at eight. Paolo, Paolo, I think Paolo has some cr- crazy hype too. Low key, like when he first touched down at I Duke. Don't, I don't think so because like. I I for sure thought Paolo should have went one. We we discussed this in the group chat, but the fact that it was a, such a toss up between Jabari Jabari Smith being a number one pick, I don't know if that was like a fit thing that they were trying to like put into perspective. But it was looking like Jabari was going to be the number one pick, and I, I in college I thought that he was going to be like some type of role player. Like he he couldn't really put the ball on the floor. He was really just like a a, a stretch with with no other abilities to me. So. I didn't really see it. So the fact that they had him over Paolo, I think Paolo has to be lowered because he didn't have hype, though. I'm not going to say he didn't have oh, hype. I completely agree. I was, like, in the same boat. With those three guys, I thought Paolo was undoubtedly, like, I wanted the Thunder. I wanted somehow to slip to two. Um, I wasn't super high on Chet. I wasn't super high on Jabari Smith. And, like, obviously they're great players. But, like, just overall, I thought Carmelo Anthony – or it was Carmelo. I thought it was Paolo because I thought he had that Carmelo Anthony type build, right, just pure score. Um, but that's low-key – that's why I kind of think you could put Aiton over him. And I know we talked about this a little bit. I think Aiton showed glimpses of both sides of the basketball, right? I think Aiton showed he could play defense and showed he could play offense. Latif, you're laughing. Melo was always a pure – or I keep saying it because I, I compare it to Melo. Paolo was a pure scorer. I don't think Paolo was ever showing, oh, he's going to be the defensive guy. He's going to be all this. At Duke, he was scoring the basketball. That was not true. He's not a, he was not a pure scorer. Paolo was a good playmaker in college. A good to great playmaker in college. So you can't say he's a pure scorer. scorer. I'm just saying, I think – Aiton showed both sides. And in a draft, I mean, you guys call the draft weak, I think. Right? Were you guys calling that 2018 draft? That 2018 draft was weak to me. The like, fact that looking, that's, looking, that's, that's, looking at prospects, like the fact that Trey Young was a, was like a top pick was crazy as a prospect. And he was if he was getting drafted today, people were like the high concerns, a whole bunch of other stuff. Like I feel yeah, like looking at looking back, like it's a great draft class, right? You got a bunch yeah. of players in there. But yeah, like no one was really picking Luca to go. I think if anyone was gonna go number one, it was probably gonna be Marvin Bagley over Aiton, but Bagley went two. Like I don't think anyone was really. I think some who it was some famous person or some analyst uh, mocked Luca to go one. I don't remember who it was, but for the most part, Aiton was pretty consensus. Um, and I think if you switch if you switch draft class, I think Aiton still goes one comfortably in twenty twenty two. I don't know if Paolo goes comfortably in twenty nineteen. I think he goes one, but I think it's kind of closer. So I just think 
I think Aiton showcased a little more on both sides of the ball, especially with positional fit. Like, I guess that's, I guess, why Aiton went one undoubtedly because they had Devin Booker. They need a big man to pair him with. But I don't know. I, I think that's, a, that's do, like, do, do you not remember the motor issues on defense that they were talking about so much with Aiden? Do you not remember that? That was his biggest flaw that he didn't want. He, he had uh, on defense, he showed a lack of effort a lot of the time. Like he had a motor Jack issue, and that's that's that whole truth to this day. The little Jack concerns about um, Aiden that he wasn't that great of a rim protector, we're that he didn't have a good prospect. motor. We're talking about pure prospects. I, I know that. I'm talking yeah, about as a prospect. Make a mold him into a, a good huh? uh, protector. What's he was one? not a good rim protector at, uh, at Arizona. He was not. Right, he was good. a power forward, and that's the reason why. And today, in today's, he, he doesn't shouldn't be playing center. But the concerns about DeAndre Aiden come out was one, his motor was bad, and two, they didn't know how good of a rim protector he could be. So I'm not buying that he was this two way prospect. I would I never I never got into I that. Really I, 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 I don't know if I really if I said that I'm sorry. I thought he showed glimpses that he could do both. I thought he could do that. I don't yeah. think Paolo's ever shown he could be a defensive player, right? I don't think Paolo's ever really showcased the defense side of the basketball. Has he? He do that in college, you that pros? Um offensively, I think he's they, so the, the, the you know how you know how with draft prospects, they'd be like, Oh, the measurables, like he can develop into that. That was the conversation around Paolo. They, he wasn't a good, good defensive player in college. No, I want to. I want to go back. I don't think it was so much that Aiton showed flashes or glimpses of being like a good defender in the future. I think it was like again off pure measurables and then his athletic ability. So, because like you said, his motor his motor was bad. But when they when we talk about him being a rim protector, they thought they they could mold him into that, which he still hasn't become. But um, yeah, I, I feel like it's it's reversible. It's interchangeable. You could put. Uh, eight and at nine, and Paolo at ten. I don't think it's too crazy, but for my my sake, I'm gonna have Paolo at nine and then eight and at ten. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, I, I've I've uh, you know asked this question in the Discord, and I I got mostly uh, eight and at ten. I know the top three was definitely consensus: Victor, Ben, um, Zion, Wiggins. That top four was actually consistent because I think those are the most hyped prospects in the last uh, twenty five years, the best prospects in the last twenty five years. Like we think about you think about Andrew Wiggins. He used to be Maple Mamba, bro. That's what they were saying about Maple Andrew Jordan. I, I mean, <laughs> it's good, bro. Maple, Maple Mamba, bro. Maple Jordan, whatever. They, they was his no. Andrew Jordan's might had one of the craziest hypes coming out of college. Like, um, even though he really like wasn't that great of a shooter, um, or playmaker, he wasn't that good at, on co- in, in defense in college either. But he was a, a um great scorer, a great attacker of the basket. Um, yeah, created yeah. Cr- you know, create his own shot. So I understand the hype around Andrew Wiggins. So. Obviously, he can be at four. Um, but, I mean, like I said, the only problem I really had was Ben Simmons over Zion. I, I think that Ben Simmons is the second most high prospect. Well, not high prospect. Second best prospect we've seen since. What was, what um, was when, the discourse about that? Uh, sorry, I was going to ask, uh, how high How high would you have put Cat? I know you said he was low. How high would you have put uh, Cat? Let me look at where Cat. I think I have. Let me go look at my list real quick. Cat is one, two, three, four, five, seventh. Cat is seventh on my list. Uh, he right at the faults. Um, yeah. Am I so tweaking? That's kind of where I had Cat, though. Eighth is uh, Apollo. Nine? Oh, I have, Kat, I, I have Cat. Oh, you have Ant that low. Damn. Okay. Yeah. And it's nine for me. Eight and it's ten. Ant, Ant's in a similar situation as far as exposure because Georgia Georgia was bad. LSU finished pretty decent in SEC standings, but, like, Georgia was buns. Georgia was really bad. I think Nick Claxton was on that team, too, though. But uh, Georgia was really bad. It's funny. All right, let's move on to this. CB3 and pool trade. Um, this happened a few days ago. We want to talk about it. CB3 going to the Warriors. 38, 38 year old CB3 getting traded for Jordan Poole. Uh, when I first saw it, I was very, very shocked. I kind of don't know where the Warriors are going uh, with this. I think they wanted to one cut C, uh, Jordan Poole's contract, get away from that because they had to be paying like 35 million over the next four years. And then they wanted to get, yeah, get off his contract. So they brought CB3 in, who was on an expiring contract. I think the, the vision is here. They're going to have CP3 run a second unit. They really ne- they never had someone to run a second unit as good as CP3 as far as being a leader, uh, distributor. And I think they can play two paces. I think they can play very fast when CP3 is on the bench. And once CP3 is in, I don't think they should, play, they should limit the CP3 curry minutes. I think that's too small of a defensive lineup. And I, I think uh, CP3 is a slower paced guard, and that will slow down the offense tremendously. We, we've seen the Warriors, they're fast paced, they get on transition. They shoot a lot of threes, which CP3 doesn't do that. They don't play a lot of pick and roll. CP3 loves that. So I think he could lead the second unit. They need some they need some veteran leadership uh, on that second unit with like with Kaminga, with Moody. If they keep them, 
Um, they brought in uh, who else? They brought in um, uh, Brandon Pozemski. So I think they need someone to run that uh, second unit. I think that's gonna be CB three. Uh, what I wanted to ask y'all though, um, let me see what was what I had on here. Uh, what I wanted to ask y'all, what is the expectations for the Warriors going into next season? Bro, I'm not gonna lie. I just don't. I don't see it. Like I know that they're looking at this as a win now situation. First off, as you said, I think this Chris Paul pairing is just a little bit disgusting. I know you didn't say that, but I feel like it's 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 kind of nasty. The pacing doesn't match up at all. Like you said, CP3 is, is going to like slow it down, run a pick and roll, dissect the pick and roll, and then that's that's just not what the Warriors are about. All about getting out, running, uh, shooting the ball, all that stuff. I don't think that this matches up well at all. I guess he can be a veteran leader, but I just don't see it. I mean, you get you're probably going to get Draymond back. Um, so in a way, it's kind of this. If you look at it, it's kind of the same team. I'm gonna, I'm going to say this is, this is a second round exit. You literally have to – we're relying on Steph. Like, this this is what it is now. Just rely on Steph, see how much Steph can carry. I think this is a second-round exit for sure. I ain't going to you just spit, bro. I go. This is definitely relying on, relying on Steph. This is so relying on Steph. This team is very, very relying on Steph's health. You know, Steph been, get, Steph been getting uh, nicked up. Like, I ain't going to lie. So, listen, Jordan Poole last year, when Steph went down, he had was like 20, 26 points, five assists. He was, he was good on bad efficiency. Good on bad efficiency. If Steph and Curry gets injured this year – it's a wrap. I ain't going to lie. I don't think CB3 can carry the ship. I don't think Clay, CB3, Draymond can carry the ship. If This season is very reliant on if Steph stays healthy. If he gets injured, it's going to get real bad. I, that's, how, that's how I feel. So this this is very reliant on Steph. Like, so I don't know. I feel like this is a second-round exit, too. First, second-round exit. If they lost in the first round, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, you see, CB3, they're going to try to load manage him throughout the entire season because, you know, when it comes playoff time, he's not, he's not there. So if they try to, like, Get him like 18 minutes a game, play him like 57, 60 games, um, keep him healthy and fresh. Um, he probably could be, you know, one of the best backup points guards in the NBA. But if if Steph goes down, this whole thing is over. It's going to get over fast. Uh, you know, Clay Thompson had a good year last year in the regular season, but um, last we saw of him, he was trash. So uh, Draymond is not an offensive threat. This might get, this might turn real 2020. 2019 is real fast. <laughs> he might get bad real fast. I'm not going to lie. Go ahead, Max. What you think? Yeah, no, I'm not a fan. I don't think it makes much sense at all. Everything, I don't know what Chris Paul is providing. He's getting older, so he's not really the defensive guy he used to be. Um, he's good in the pick and roll, but I don't know who he's doing a pick and roll with, to be honest. I don't think you're really putting Kevon Looney. Maybe you do Andrew Wiggins in a pick and roll, but I don't even like, like how that looks. Kaminga. Uh, Granted, he gets minutes. You need to see some up from him. You need to see him get better. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like veteran leadership. They have veterans. You know, they got Steph. They got Clay. They got Dre. They don't. They have Iggy still on the team. Like they don't need another vet. Um, they're for, a second, to- for a second year. They definitely need that. They didn't. They need a veteran leader. I'm just saying, but like overall on the team, like you don't need a vet on that team. Like you could sign a cheaper vet in free agency. The biggest thing about this is getting Jordan Poole's contract off your books, which is great. It makes you pay less money now and in the future. Um. But, yeah, I don't get it. Um, people are trying to, like – I know ESPN, their sports center, put out a lineup like, uh, like this could be nasty or this could be scary. And the lineup was uh, Chris Paul, Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond. Made me so, want to – I don't know who's scared of that lineup. Um, like, I'm sorry, it's not beating – It's again, it's not beating the Lakers. It's definitely not beating uh, Denver. It's not beating Boston. It's not beating Milwaukee. It's not beating – there's so many teams that I feel like are better. I not beat the Suns. I don't Honestly. even know if he beats Dallas. I think Dallas could low key beat him. Like I'm just like, I, I'm just I don't think that's doing that much. Like, and this is all relying on Draymond getting signed back. We'll talk about that later. But like, still, like I don't know what Chris Paul's providing for you. I guess after this year, it's a one year rental, so he's kind of gone after this. Unless you want to sign up for the low. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It makes no sense. Uh, I'll switch it up to the Wizards' perspective, though. I think Washington. I, I kind of – I don't I, – we talked about this. I'm not a big Jordan Poole fan on this podcast. Um, I think Jordan Poole will average like 40 shots a game. He might be putting up 30 points a game on the worst efficiency in the league, but he'll still be getting his buckets. Um, but their their backcourt is not terrible, but it's pretty close, pretty bad, but it's not terrible. I do like Tyus Jones. I like Jordan Poole. But for them, it's just getting picks, um, getting like money off the books and just trying to restart. Um, picking Koulibaly kind of lets you refresh your team. Um, really just trying to go for as much possible upside as, as you can, right? 
You're hoping uh, Tyus can turn into a facilitating point guard. You're hoping Jordan Poole can turn into an efficient scorer. Um, you're hoping Koulibaly can turn into just a crazy wing defender and score. Um, if, if it all works out, it'd be great. But at this point in time, they have what? Uh, four second round pick. They get four second round picks and four pick swaps, which, again, I, I thought you said they wouldn't be the greatest. But, I mean, if you're going so far in the future, the Suns could be terrible after all this doesn't work out. So uh, it works or works, doesn't work out. But um, I, I like the trade better for Washington. Um, you have all the money in the world. Why not pay to somebody? So I'm kind of cool with that. It gets Chris Paul off the books. You do get another first and a second. So I, I don't like the fit that much uh, for Golden State. But on Washington's side, it's not that bad because you get some money back. Um, but it's it's an ugly trade both ways. I'm not going to lie. It's not a really it, – it's, it's a trade that you're surprised by, but, like, no one's really happy. Like, you, sh- if you're a Warriors fan, I don't know if you're happy. If you're a Wizards fan, I don't know if you're happy. Um, it's just a weird trade. I don't agree with the Wizards fans. Wizard uh, fans uh, part. I think Jordan Poole has some potential in this league, and I, that's gonna be my next question for you guys. What do you think Jordan? What do you think Jordan Poole's potential is in the NBA right now? I mean, so when we when we look at what he averaged last year as a starter, he started forty three games, uh, twenty four point six points, four point six assists, three rebounds, on um, terrible efficiency, was very turnover prone now he has his own team if you want to look at it in that sense so i think jordan Poole can be an all-star player if that's what you were asking i don't know if you wanted to go into like predict predicting his stat line but I, I think jordan Poole definitely has the uh, the capability of being an all-star in this league i feel like he has a, a modern type game like i feel like this is uh, he has a game that all like the fans want to see and all that type of stuff so i feel like he can make an all-star appearance here and there uh, he's not a bad shooter. Uh, just a lot. He's very inefficient. Um, so next year he's gonna have range to the offense. So I'm gonna say he's gonna average around these same numbers. I say like 26 points, maybe five, six assists, three rebounds. I think he's still gonna be very turnover prone. I think he's gonna still be very inefficient. Um, but yeah, I, I see him. I can see him being an all star. I'm not gonna count him out. All-star? I'm not seeing it. Uh, I think there's too many guards in the NBA, especially in the East. In his career? Uh, yeah, nah, no. Uh, I think, I, like I Max said, I think he'll be like a Jordan Clarkson type player. He's going to be a Jordan Clarkson, Jordan Clarkson type player with the green light, um, honestly. Uh, All-star, he's going to be close to that as far as production. Will he get the nod? No. But like as far as production, yeah. I think he's going to average like 24 points, five assists, three rebounds on terrible efficiency, uh, four turnovers. I can see that possibly being the case. Uh, I'm not really high on Jordan Poole, um, honestly, but um, his like his numbers are going to be close to All Star. Yeah, like, he can probably like 24 points, 43 percent from the field, 38 percent from three. He's a good shooter, 90 percent from the free throw line. He can always do be that. Um, he needs to limit the turnovers, which, which can happen because Tyus Jones is going to be uh, running the offense. So that that's possibly a, a thing that could happen. Uh, limited turnovers, but uh, All Star player? No, I don't. I don't see it. I don't think it's, it's so many guards in the league. It's so many guards in the East. Um, yeah, so and then you know it's popularity type thing too. Jordan Poole is, is pretty cool as a as a player, but like, do you think he'll ever get like? Come on, we talking about be better, being better than Darius Garland, Tyree. This is just East. Darius Garland, Tyrese Halliburton, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brown is considered a guard. Like it's, it's a whole bunch of guards. I just feel like he's not gonna make it. No, nah, I think okay, Tyrese Maxey. I think um first off he's gonna have the reins. I think you, there's you can have, you can put him over Tyrese. But Maxey. they're not winning though. It don't matter though. Yeah, like, no, we're looking at the worst team in the league. <laughs> for sure, like, worst team in the league. Like so, I think, I, I these this team could be worse than Charlotte. This team could be worse than the Charlotte team. I'm so serious. That Charlotte team did not finish a full season. I think we could look, be looking at a team who's like competing for how bad that record is. I don't I, think so. I think that's a stretch. I think it's bad. It, it's it's worse than we all think. Like no, no, no because like Jordan Poole, he doesn't like he like Jordan Poole. Tyus Jones is probably going to be one of the better point guards in the league. Um, Jordan Poole is going to be one of the. Oh, he's gonna be a decent point guard. Players. Like they got cook, huh? One of the better point guards in the league. Yeah. 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 Top what? Upper echelon. Like there's a lot of good point guards. I said league. one of the better. I didn't say he. I, but it's point guards are loaded. Uh, loaded. Yeah. There's um, a lot of good point guards. Though. I, I, th- I think. Like, he could be, like he was the best. He was the best backup in the league last year. So let like it wasn't thirty two point guards better than him last year. No way, no how. Um, as far as being a point guard, I think uh, he's better than uh, KBJ. But KBJ is gonna be a six man this year. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call. I wouldn't call like. I don't know. There's 32 quarterbacks in the league, but some backups. I wouldn't call them one of the better. You know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to switch. That's sports. not the same thing. 
a little bit. I'm one of the better. There's still 30 point guards better than him. Like, I don't think it's one of the better, but I'm not going to go too hard into it. 30 point guards better than him. I, I feel like huh? they're not 30 point guards better than Ty Jones. No, they're not. He's, he's, saying, uh, he's better than KPJ. I don't feel like that says a lot because KPJ is not even a real point he's guard. A point guard. He That's just got true. That position. I don't. <sighs> Can I hop into my Jordan Fulton quick? Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I don't. I think it's a little too early to tell if he's never gonna be an all star ever again. I'm not gonna. Bro, was in year five, huh? <laughs> he's a year five, bro. If he has a great year next year, I mean, like people can emerge out of nowhere. I'm uh, just wait, saying, I have a question for you. Did Bradley Beal make that the year? Make it the year he averaged thirty points? I think it was one of the years he didn't. That was we, like, I don't he think he did. Got, he got one year he didn't. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, because if you're not winning, they don't care, bro. I, I promise you. Yeah, but it's fan favorites. I think there is a fan vote. So if he is can win the fans over, if Washington can get behind it enough. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think I don't think it's an all star like starter. You know what I mean? Like stuff just happens sometimes. Random stuff happens. But I think I think Jordan Poole, I, I know I just said he, maybe one day he makes an all star. I'm not hundred percent sure. I think, I think he can, think bro. He's a Jordan Clarkson type player right now. Um I think Jordan Clarkson, that's like in my opinion, that's what I think his uh ceiling will be. I think he'll be a great six man if he can get in the right system. But with the money he's getting paid, no one's gonna Bring him in as a six man. He's getting paid too much money yeah. right now. So. Just just to go back on like the all star thing, I know we're, we kind of like went a little bit too heavy on that, but you got to think, bro. All star game is like a a fanfare type of thing. So he's going he's going to give you twenty five. He's going to give you like five six assists. I'm not going to really talk about the rebounds. That doesn't really matter. But so those are decent enough stats. I know that he might be, he's going to most likely be inefficient. I know he's going to most likely be turn turnover prone, but when you strictly look at the numbers, that's pretty decent. But then, also, you have to look at his game, how he's scoring, what he's shooting. First off, Trey Young, Trey Young shot inefficiently because of the type of shot, the level of difficulty that he was shooting his shots. I'm not saying that they're on the same level, but I'm just saying. But then, also, Jordan Poole is very popular when it comes to the fans. When you go on TikTok, you know, you see all these slow-mo edits of Jordan Poole dribbling and all this stuff. What kind like, of TikTok you on, man? Weird. What's that? But I'm just saying, like he's he's very popular amongst fans. So to say that he can't be an all star, I feel like that's a little too crazy. I think just because he's in year five, again, like Matt said, I, I think he can't have like a breakout type season. But this team is gonna be bad, though. Like it's gonna be very bad. Well, there was think, another trade. Oh, good. You want to say something? My bad. I didn't. Know, I was. No, you, you, I was just gonna say the starting lineup. I think's got Tyus, uh, Tyus, Jordan Poole, Corey Kispert, Daniel Gafford. It's got Patrick Baldwin Jr. I see. I like the potential over there with Patrick Baldwin Jr. Uh, sure. Okay. Next, next topic. This is gonna give this. This is gonna uh, give a lot of experience to Kulabali though. Like everybody's gonna get a lot of experience yeah, on that this, team. Holy, who's coaching that team? I don't know. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I don't watch watching basketball. I'm not watching it now. Um, we're moving on. Another big trade happened this weekend. Chris Porzingis to the Celtics. I'm gonna start off with the uh, Celtics though. Does this move make them? The favorites in the East. I think it does, bro. I think it does. I know me and uh, Teef had a little back and forth today on Twitter. When you get a 20 and 10 capable type of guy, when you add that to the – here we go. When you, when you <laughs> add, that, add that to your roster, I know – can, can, can I ask Max, Max a question real quick? Jay, um, Max, if, would you say someone's capable of 20 and 10 but they've never done it in their entire career? Uh, how many years have they been playing in their career? Eight. Is someone capable of 20 and 10? What, on, on a team, wait, with context, on a team with Al Horford, Jason Tatum, Robert Williams, who are all good rebounders. Yeah, you're getting, I, you're getting a lot of your points taken away and a lot of your boards taken away. So I think you are. Up, but I think Porzingis is a great fit on this team. Let's not. First like, off, impress. first off, that doesn't that literally doesn't discount anything what I said. I said he's a he's a twenty and ten capable guy. I didn't say he was going to be that for this team. I said he's a twenty and ten capable guy. Like. For, forget the team. I would say he's a 20 and 10 capable guy. Second, Max, you're a hypocrite because Jordan Poole is what in his fifth year going into a sixth year? So well, let's go. Jordan Poole has never made an all-star team. He's never made an all-star team. <laughs> since he's never done it, he's he's not capable of I'm saying, being an all-star I'm player. saying I just I just said, do I think he will? No, but it's too early to sell. It's his fifth okay, year. So he's been playing behind it, Steph crazy? Curry. He's a bench player. You're not gonna put a bench player in an all-star is it crazy? team. That's a is stupid it crazy comment. To, is it crazy to say that Christos Porzingis is a 20 and 10 capable guy. Um, I mean, like, no, no, okay, okay, on this team, I, yes, I don't and basketball team. I don't, I, I don't, on I don't this know. team, 20 and 10 is kind of crazy to me. Maybe he balls out, but like on those, on the Knicks teams, on the Mavs teams, like, yeah, I'd say that. I think he's getting like, I don't know if he could, 
Can but Max, he didn't do that on the as the number one rebounder on the team. He did not do that. Insane. I would think, oh, if it, if he's walking to those organizations, cool. But there's a lot of guys rebounding the basketball and a lot of guys scoring the basketball in Boston. So I think it's going to be tough for him to do it. But I, I I'm not going to lie. I think Kristaps could be in for a good year. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I know. Twenty ten's a number. Go, go. No, no. Let me, let Jaden go because I interrupted him uh, when I was saying it. But go ahead to why why you think this is making them contenders though. Okay, so realistically, like you said, I'm going to agree with you, T. I think Chris Osporzingis, production-wise, is going to give you 18, 7, something around there, maybe 19, 8, something some around there, like in, in, that, in that ballpark. Chris Osporzingis is a great run protector. You pair that along, uh, Robert Williams, the defense is going to be impeccable. Uh, Jason Tatum can guard. Uh, Jalen Brown, I know you said that he had a down year on defense, but Jalen Brown can guard. I don't know who's going to step up and be a starting point guard. Is that going to be Derek White? Is that going to be Malcolm Brogdon? I don't know, but this is a great team. I feel like the depth is is really nice. I know you got rid of your heart and soul and Marcus Smart, but in return, I feel like Kristaps Porzingis, I'd take that trade any day. I'm not going to lie. Like, I know Boston And two fans, first. And two first. That's huge. They got two first-round picks. Right, right, right. So, I know a lot of Boston fans were a little bit mad about uh, losing Marcus Smart, but what you got back was very good. Uh, Chris Osborne is going to help this team a lot. And, yeah, I, I have them as the favorites for sure. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I got to wait to see what Boston – I got to wait to see what Milwaukee does. Milwaukee. But I was going to talk about if Milwaukee does not put some pieces together – see, that's, that was a terrible comment. Let's see if you – saying that their team is old and washed up after just getting the one seed is a terrible comment. That's I'm not going to lie. They are very old. They, they need to get young they're quick. They're old, but saying they're washed up is crazy. No, I know. A lot of their players are washed up. Joe Ingles is washed up. Um, who else was on that team? Um, we want to we want to start having a conversation about Drew Holiday. He's he is considering retirement for a reason. <laughs> so uh, that's that's yeah, <laughs> Chris like, Middleton is not about a like seven years ago. Yeah, he's no, 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 no. Drew Holiday just literally said in his contract he's done one, um, two. The last three playoff runs he has been trash. That's 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 two, three. Chris Middleton, I don't think he's the same player. He can he is anymore. Am I lying? He's not. Um, I mean, he's been injured. very very old team. They need to be young fast. Brooke Love is like 40. I, that, hey, he's still Brooke good. Love, I'm sorry. Uh, for, Drew Holiday's made an all-star team. I know we were talking about fan vote. Drew Holiday's made an all-star team. Brooke Love has one of the best defenses in the league last year. Chris Middleton was injured. They still have Giannis. Like, we keep forgetting that. Giannis is a top two oh, player. Man. No question. I'm sorry. It's Jokic it's and question. Giannis or Giannis and Jokic. That's how it is. Steph. No, you even said Giannis. You're just lying. So it's cool. I have se- I have Giannis at three right now. What are you? Why are we talking about? I have Giannis at three. Two weeks ago, when you had Giannis. So what changed? Bro, we are not. No, I said I have Steph at three, but we we not gonna we gonna go with consensus because y'all said hey, y'all hey. had Giannis. Huh? Y'all had Giannis, and I had Steph. So I was like, fuck, I was like, whatever. Okay. Well, anyways, Jokic and Giannis are one and two. Uh, whatever. I put Giannis one. You put Jokic one. It doesn't matter. But I think those are the two best players in basketball. Um, Boston does not have that. Boston has a great supporting cast right now. I think Milwaukee's got to do something. Joe Ingles might be old. He can still shoot. Grayson Allen's getting probably moved. They keep He keeps being in trade rumors. I think you got to develop some guys like Marjan Bochamp. you got to get a diamond in the rough somewhere because that's what Boston was doing. Boston got guys like Marcus Smart to buy into the system, right, to play offense and defense. They traded for guys like Derek White and Malcolm Brogdon. But, yeah, I mean, there's not much to hate on Boston's team, right? Brad Stevens putting pieces together. Uh, Joe Mazzulla's got to get it together, I guess, right? Joe Mazzulla, he's had a year under his belt. Hopefully he can take this in the next year. Um, I, I think it's, he's just got to be, become a better coach, right? Ime was great year one. Um, and then I think there were some issues, obviously, in the playoffs and play calling. I know was not the greatest um, throughout the playoffs with Mazzulla. But, like, one through five, I mean, it's, it's tough to find a better five out there right now. Like, their starting five is solid. They have good bench pieces. Um Big depth is great. If you can put Kristaps as your four, like you're playing big and you're playing pretty effectively because he can shoot the ball. Um, you still got Tatum. You still got JB. I think JB, 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 I think will be better defensively this year because you have more guys. Porzingis is a defender. No, you have JT. You have you still have there, yeah. you still have a lot. You have a lot better of a defensive front court. Um, I think they're probably bringing a couple guys, obviously. But you still got Derek White. You still got Malcolm Brogdon, who were two clutch pieces for you last year, who were great. It sucks losing Smart, but getting two first-round picks and not having to pay him is pretty nice. I'm not going to lie. Like, he was wanting a bag, right? He was wanting a big bag. So, I, I think he thinks he deserves uh, it, right? 
Yes, yes. I think yes. he was going to. I think he's probably going to sign for what well, he's getting paid now, but just over a longer year, longer yeah. contract. I thought which is what they still they have to still extend him, bro. They're going to have to still extend him. Who? Uh, KP. That was the whole point of him coming over here for, for him. Yes. Who's a better basketball player, Kristaps Porzingis or Marcus Smart? I'm not. I'm not disputing that. What, what is, I, I, I'd rather put money into Kristaps Porzingis than I would Marcus. Smart. Yeah, but he's making he's making thirty three this year. Yeah, and, was and I'm not gonna. Lie. I just saw earlier so people people saying he might get forty. I don't. I don't know about that. That's no, kind of crazy. Thought Marcus Smart was trying to get somewhere in that twenty five to thirty range. I thought that. Well, was I think Marcus Smart deserves that though. I think KP deserves more. I'm. I, I'm not disputing that. I would rather. I feel like I'd rather pay. Uh, Twenty or thirty-five for KP than twenty-five for Marcus Smart. But regardless, you have you have Derek White. Who I'm sorry, Derek White's a smaller version of Marcus Smart. And Derek White played very good basketball last year when Jalen Brown was injured. Derek White filled in that role great. You had Malcolm Brown with Sixth Man of the Year, so it sucks. And I guess for Boston sports fans, right, who love Marcus Smart, it sucks. But I don't think the loss is going to be that big, right? You got new guys in the locker room. JT and that. JB have been there for a while. You got guys who are going to pick up the role in the defensive end. Um, yeah, Jordan Wash too. Huh? They got Jordan Walsh. Yeah, they they got Jordan Walsh. Mm -hmm. I thought Sacramento got Jordan Walsh. It was a whole bunch of trades, bro. Uh, that's confusing. Anyways, Jordan Walsh is great defensively. Then fine, that's cool because he goes to a contender that helps. But yeah, I think I think when they look like it might suck for Boston sports fans because they whatever their guy lost they lost their guy right the guy part and soul of their team what you were saying. But I don't think it's gonna be that bad in the, like the long run. I think it's gonna work out. I think they're poised for another finals run potentially. Um, if, in, barring injuries and everything. I think you got to do very minimal stuff from free agency. I think they're pretty good for next year. I think they definitely teams, they definitely need a guard. They definitely need a point guard. Teams, uh, to teams like like Milwaukee, I think Milwaukee could be good, but you got a lot of moves to make, right? You got to get Brooke. You got to do something with Chris Middleton or find another star. Um, you got to fill out the bench. Like Boston's pretty sound right now. They have everything in place. I agree. You need a point guard. Um, did you guys hear? So it was they had the trade with um they had the what was it? The Porzingis trade with the Clippers in place, and they had a separate trade for Smart? Never, never heard that. It was like a separate trade for Smart, so that was already in the works. So they already had that moved, and they were supposed to get Tyus Jones back. Tyus Jones in two first for Marcus Smart. But then when the uh, Porzingis trade fell through, they just switched it around. So All right. I want to get into my little spiel about the uh, Celtics. With this addition of Chris Porzingis, I definitely had the Celtics as favorites in the East. He, serves, he, he solves a lot of their problems, especially – as a rim protector in the pick and roll, he's great at that. Teams are not going to be able to double team Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum anymore because the threat of Chris Porzingis on the perimeter is a big one. If you leave him open, he's going to be very lethal. He's going to give you 18 a game on four threes. He can do that. Like he's going to knock the three down. He's going to be good in the post. He's very versatile as a scorer. So this addition definitely makes some favorites in the East. I will have him over Miami. I will have him over the Bucks. And so, yeah, that's that's really all I wanted to say uh, about the Celtics. But, uh, yeah, Chris Porzingis was one of the best pick-and-roll defenders uh, last year. They definitely needed uh, some more front court depth because Al Horford is old. Robert Williams get injured a lot. So, yeah, they, 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 this is a big upgrade for them. Um, they got two first-round picks for it, which is crazy for uh, Marcus Smart. That's a great return for Marcus Smart. Um, it's, it's painful to see the heart of this um, Celtics go. But it's time for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to step up. Y'all are in year six and year seven. You shouldn't be losing the heart of the team. The heart of the team should be Mark Smart. You're the leader of the team. You need to be the leader of the team. You need to be the heart of the team. All that, all that, bro. Like, so um, it's a big loss from a culture standpoint. Standpoint. Mark Smart always got on the ground. He, you know, was fearless. He was your bodyguard, all that stuff. But from a on paper standpoint, this house got better. Um, and I won't dispute that, dispute that with anybody. Um, so. We can move on to, you know, it's obviously another part of the trade was Marcus Smart going to the the, um, the the Grizzlies. I want to speak about that for a second. I think the biggest winner of this Marcus Smart to the Grizzlies trade is John Morant. He needed a veteran leader to mentor him, to show him what he needs to do. And they, they need that type of player in Memphis. They had Dylan Brooks, who was supposed to be like the, anta the uh, antagonist, the player that gets under your skin, it's going to be great on defense. But I think Marcus Smart is a better version of that. He still has ill advised shots, but he's a better three point shooter than Dylan Brooks was last year. And I think he's a better playmaker than Dylan Brooks as well. So I like the addition for the Grizzlies. I think it'll be very well for John Murray. I think he's the biggest winner uh, out of that trade for the Grizzlies. I think, you know, having him over there is going to be beneficial for John Morant. I think we probably won't see another one of these scandals going on. Right, right. Yeah, I, I agree with that. What Dylan Brooks thinks he is, 
Marcus Smart is actually. Um, we we seen Marcus Smart offensive game come strides like progress strides since he's been in the league. I think he's a far better shooter than Dylan Brooks. I think he's a far better player offensively than Dylan Brooks. The only question is is what is going to happen with size. But then again, like free agency didn't happen, so this is not this is most likely not going to be the same team that we're looking at right now. But like you said, let's see. I think that. You get a, a great veteran presence, uh, a great leader, somebody who's going to actually be on John Morant. Like you said, when are you, these scandals shouldn't happen again. Uh, you have somebody in a locker room like who actually knows what they're doing, who's actually went to the finals, who's actually like you know had that that type of experience. So to mentor these young guys, I feel like that's great for for Memphis. So yeah, this this has a, a huge mem- impact on the Grizzlies for sure. Yeah, Marcus Marcus Smart can actually talk. You know what I'm saying? He got a DPOY. Um, he's locked up LeBron. Right? He's like done. He's done the work. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> when the fuck? What is he like? Oh, LeBron. What, I, okay, he was trolling. All right, we're gonna like, I'm not gonna, gonna, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm just saying, in Dylan, in Dylan Brooks' head, he locks up everybody, right? Like, Marcus Smart actually can't play defense. Um, no, Marcus Smart wins. Like, Marcus Smart, he's he's good leadership. I think they have now have an elite perimeter defender and they have an elite post defender. Um, defense, like, especially if you get Steven Adams back, if you get Steven Adams and you get uh, Triple J in there and you get Marcus Smart in there. And then you probably throw what? Ja Desmond Bain? That'd probably be your starting five whenever it comes back. Is that fair? I think Marcus Smart is gonna come out of the bench. Yeah, that's that's, that's starting of them. Huh? I, I think in crunch time, that's your starting lineup. In crunch time, when you're two minutes left in the finals, that's your starting lineup. They gotta make some moves. You gotta make some moves. Marcus yeah. Smart like six five. Defensively, Marcus Smart can pick up. Marcus Smart could pick up a big though. Like not a big guy, but a wing. Marcus Smart could pick up a wing. Stop it. He yes, can switch, Marcus. he can switch on them periodically. Marcus Smart to... can defend a wing. Marcus Smart was uh was not that good defensive. Well, he was good defensive, but not he was, Derek White was better than last year on defense. John, Mar- you have exactly. John Morant. Okay. I'll give him like six two, six three. Desmond Bain, what is Desmond Bain like six three, six four? And then you have Marcus Smart six four. Oh yeah, that can't be the lineup. No. Yeah, that's a three guard lineup. That is terrible. <laughs> Desmond Bain is a lot shorter than I remember. Um, that's yeah, but I like the deal. Um, I just think they gave up a little too much. Two first round picks is low key a lot for Marcus Smart. How many years you got left on this deal? Mm. I, I thought he was a free agent coming up here, so maybe I'm tweaking. That. But that's kind of a lot of money for Marcus Smart right now. So uh, two first round picks. I get they're not trying to really draft right now. You're trying to win now, so you got to use your picks. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully leadership enough is able to uh, like win the deal for him. I think they got D. Jackson. Am I tripping? They did. I thought. Yeah, that's a, a great pickup from an um, upside standpoint. Hopefully, you can and, develop under Triple J. Memphis is a, a great development team. Like they get diamonds roughs all the time, and they develop them. Um, the yeah, they got that one dude from um, bro. I don't want to go into the roster right now, but they've Desmond developed. Desmond Bain, yeah. Desmond Bain, they had the, uh, David Roddy was good last year for, in spurts. They got that one. That, I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know his name, but he was like, uh, oh, bro. He was he's a shooter. He's a white shooter, white boy shooter, shooter. Um, right, um, John Conchar. Yeah, John Conchar was good for them last year. So they know how to get the most out of. Okay. Uh, so they- I had a nasty block on AD. You don't remember that one? That was nasty. Yeah, uh, we won it five. But anyways, um, <laughs> all right, moving on to the uh, top landing spots for um, free agents. Free agents. All right, so let me get this up. Who got the lead? I'm here. All I'll right, first. let me go first. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna just say the names, and then y'all can give me a team. Um, yeah, go name by name. Go name by name. Yes. Go name by name. We'll go. Let's do the top landing spots for free agents. First, you're going to start off with James Harden. Sixers. Sixers. I think he'll sign back to the Sixers, too. He don't got many options anymore, especially after Houston drafted him. I'm in Thompson. They don't need a point guard. Um, Kyrie Irving. Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. I don't know. It's it, he's it's so much money. It's not a player who you could easily see going place to place. Um, but I do think Dallas just re-signs him. I think he goes to the Heat. They need a scorer. They might not get Zach Levine. They might not get Damian Lillard. I think Kyrie Irving is a good option for them. Um, he can be the best scorer on the team down the stretch. They can go to Kyrie Irving. He's still clutch, still one of the best scorers in the league. Kyrie Irving in Miami makes sense for me. Um, especially, I think that he all the shenanigans out the window with Pat Riley. Not going to lie. Um, Chris Middleton. Am I going first? Good. It don't matter. Uh, I think he goes to the Bucks, but I would low key be looking for Sacramento. I feel like Sacramento might try and throw some money at him to sign him. That's not a bad idea. I like that fit. He- I, defensively, it's defensively it's not great because they do need a defender. Um, same thing with Kuzma. He's they're not a slouch on defense. I'm saying it like they 
they keep thinking about bringing Kuzma, right? I keep seeing Kuzma going to Sacramento too with their interest. They were interested in Bradley Beal, right? They want to score. I don't think they need scoring as much, but if that's the way they're going, I would not be surprised if they threw a bag at Chris Middleton. That's definitely an upgrade over uh, Harrison Barnes. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, for sure. No, I got him going to the Bucks. All right, we got um, Fred and Fleet. The Bulls. Chicago. I think they need a point guard, especially if uh, Lonzo's out for the whole year. They need a guard. I don't think they run it back with this team, but especially if they do, um, yeah, you need a point guard. So I think uh, they could be in play. And get rid of Vooch's contract to sign him. Realistically, I see him going to eat. Realistically. That's not a bad option. Mm-hmm. For me, Fred and Fleet, I'm going to say the Rockets, they have a lot of money to spend. He wants a bag. They need shooting. He provides that. He can be the backup point guard. Uh, Fred and Fleet. By the way, you're mean. Let's see. If I said off camera, I said Fred Lee to the Heat, and you said I was nasty. So that's not cool. How are you going to switch up now? Because I don't think – actually, uh, that is nasty. My bad, Jaden. That's nasty. They, I didn't think about it. I really didn't think about it. One, they're going to have to give him uh, $30 million, which they, they do not have. See, they're going to pay attention to that contract stuff. That's, that's your thing. If they if they gonna if they gonna give someone thirty million dollars, it need to be someone that can actually help them win the championship. And Fred Van Fleet is a uh, probably a starter for them, but I don't think he puts them over the top. Um, so yeah. All right, next name we got is Russell Westbrook. I have I think Rush can actually go to the Bulls. Bulls need everything. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, playmaking is is one of the ones that they need for sure. A point guard, Rush Rush serves that purpose too. That's a good pick. I, I, you me go. I just got Russ resigning with the Clippers. They didn't get CP3. Um, I could see him just going back to Clips. I can see him going to Suns, teaming up with Kevin Durant again. They need a point guard. He's not with that much money. They don't have that much money to give. So I think he can go back. He can go back with KD, try to win a championship together. They can make that relationship. I think that's possible. They've been growing over the last couple of years. I think he can go to the Suns and be, have an instant impact, especially because they need playmaking. They need someone that can uh, put rim pressure on the rim with Bradley Bill, all that stuff. Uh, he can either come off the bench or be a starting point guard. Um, last name is uh, Draymond. All right. Warriors. I think he goes to the Warriors, but I would love to see Draymond go to two contenders like Miami or Dallas. They need defense. Um, Miami plays small ball. You could put Draymond in a small ball big. You could throw uh, Draymond in the defensive set with Dallas. I think that works. The only issue is shooting. You can't shoot the basketball with Luka. That's bad. But defensively, it fits. Um, they need defenders very badly. The only issue is the contract. If he gets paid $30 million, I don't think either of those teams are going to honestly pay him $30 million. So, realistically, he probably just goes back to Golden State. Not even for the contract. The fit in Miami would be terrible with uh, Bam Adebayo. That would be terrible for spacing. Um, they do need a big, but that's they need a backup big. And um, Draymond at the, what, five? And then Bam Adebayo at the four. You just want to make things harder for uh, Jimmy Butler, I see. Um, but for me, Draymond is going to resign with the Warriors. He's obviously not going to the Mavs because he doesn't fit their timeline. Um, he's on the way out, I feel like, personally. Um, and Draymond really works. Draymond really only works with the Warriors. I'm not going to lie. Um, because- I was just about to say that. The thing is, the thing the thing with Draymond, and I think Draymond deep down knows this himself, uh, Draymond is perfect for the Warriors. Like, the Warriors wouldn't be, any, wouldn't be what they are without Draymond. I think everybody can attest to that and agree with that. But uh, Draymond wouldn't be anything without the Warriors. Jamal wouldn't be anything without two elite, elite, the one of the best shooters we've seen in the game. Uh, I know he does have serves, serves a great defensive prowess, but Draymond on any team, any other team to me, I, I, I think we kind of see him revert back to the 2020 Draymond that we saw when it was when it was him, Jordan Poole, all these other randoms, Marquise Chris, like those type of people. I think that's what he reverts back to. So I think he knows that the Warriors need him. And then he also knows that he needs the Warriors. So I think Actually. he'll be fine back with the Warriors. Draymond, I think if, it, if this was 2016 Draymond, he's top free agent. I'm sorry. If this is 2015, 2016 Draymond, he's a top free agent. But unfortunately, oh, a top good. free agent? I thought you meant the top free agent. I was about to say, you're wilding. Who's a, he had more of a scoring bag, though. Like, he was, yeah, like, if, if it's James Harden is a better free agent than him. Kyrie Irving is a better free agent than him. Oh, I think what are we talking about? 2016 Draymond, like, would he, he was low key. Uh, Steph had some downs and that game seven of the 2016 finals he bought. He had like 30 points, I think. He was great offensively and defensively. His offensive game's all gone, so he wasn't great. He was great as a playmaker offensively. Uh, he, he was a good shooter. He, actually offensively. Could shoot the basketball. he has no bag, so I don't know what you, anyways. He don't put pressure on the run either, so yeah. But, um, 
Is that all that matters to a basketball player? Putting pressure on the Oh, oh my God, bro. That matters as a, when you're evaluating players. What are we talking about? I don't know if he's trying to act like it doesn't. You, li- you listen to Legend of Winning too much, but I don't care about what KD said. That matters, bro. Like, you can't just not put pressure on the rim, bro. You're an offensive player. Anyways, let's move on to NFL. We got NFL over unders for the AFC East. Um, so I'm just gonna name the team that you give me the over. I'm gonna name the team they over under. You tell me go uh, uh, over or under. Okay. All right. Uh, let me find it real quick. All right. NFC East over unders. Cowboys at nine point five. Over. Over. I got them at around like ten or eleven. Cowboys are always gonna be a great regular season team, but then again, when you get into the postseason. Your outlier, your outlier is going to be Dak Prescott, and he's going to fail you. But a re- regular season, I, I, over at nine and a half. I got them at ten, eleven. I there's some. I think there's some toss up games they got. Um, I think games like the Jets, the Dolphins, the Forty uh, ers think could go either way. Um, even the Eagles game, I think can go either way. I think the Eagles are guaranteed one. I got them going eleven and six. Um, I'm not as high on them as other people are. I don't think they'll make the Super Bowl this year. I still think the Eagles are the team to beat. Um, but eleven and six, I got them pretty comfortably going over. I got them going eleven and six too. I think they have one, they're going to have one of the best defenses in the National Football League. They got Stephon Gilmore to make make sure that happens. They got Brandon Cooks, who's a wide receiver too. We saw Dak Prescott need that last year. He needed a wide receiver too. Also, Dak Prescott, if he's healthy, he's going to be a top ten, top eleven quarterback in the NFL. I think last year he was dealing with injuries, so that's why he struggled. I think if he get back to his prime form, we've seen the last uh, three seasons. They can go eleven to six. They have a, a pretty decent schedule. They have a pretty great team. Um, for me, I think the Cowboys are dark horse Super Bowl contenders. I'm very high on the Cowboys. I like what they did in the offseason. I think if they can pull it together in the playoffs, which you never seen them do, they can make the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm not. Let's let's say that the the Eagles or the 49ers knock one of each other off. If they get through it, depending on where they are as far as seeding, I think they can um, make it to Super Bowl possibly. I don't, I don't think that's crazy to say. I don't know what y'all think. Uh, next thing up, we got the Eagles at eleven point five. Over, over, yeah. I'm looking think, at the schedule. I think they could win twelve to fourteen games. They got them going thirteen to four. Um, I think they're they got better. They got not. They didn't get better, but they they honestly they just uh what's the word I'm looking for? Maintain. No, they like they made their championship window a lot uh bigger, right? A lot longer. They kind of like they had to pay guys, but with how they drafted. Um, how they re-signed some guys. They had to make some tough decisions, but they did make their championship window a lot bigger. So um, I do think that they will be the top dogs, like I said, in that division for a while. So, um, yeah, I think they're second-best team in the NFL. So I go out on a limb and say they, they go 14-3, and three, bro. Could happen. I got them going 13-4. and four. I got them going over as well. Um, they had the best draft in the NFL by like not by far, but they had the best draft in the NFL. They had the best team in the NFL. They have a top six, top seven quarterback in the NFL. They have a top three wide receiver room in the NFL. They have the best offense line in the NFL. They have a good running back room. They, this team is complete. They uh they they just I'm not gonna lie. Certain games they're gonna be just better than you. Um, I think they sweep the Giants. I think they sweep the Commanders, and I think they split with the Cowboys. I have them winning, losing one game in the entire division. Um, I think they're gonna really assert the dominance this year. Um, so I've been going um, over. Next up, we got the Giants at seven point five. Over, I got them going eight and nine. So it'll be close, but they got a tough schedule this year. I think Daniel Jones is a solid quarterback. I don't think he's great. I think he overperformed last year. Um, they did add some good pieces. Darren Waller, um, I think, would be a good receiving option because they don't really have many. Um, yeah, I don't know. They got a tough schedule this year, so I'm not thinking they do much more than that. So. Uh, eight and nine, nine and eight. I think they go over, but not by much. Uh, I got them under. I got them going uh seven and ten. Darren Waller is a great piece we had on the offensive end, but I think that was like a miracle run. I don't think uh Danny Dimes does as well as he did in the postseason. Um, yeah, Saquon looked good, but yeah, I got them going seven and ten. I I can see them going eight and nine though too. I got them going over. I got them going eight and nine. I think they didn't add a lot of weapons on offense, which they really needed to. Um, Darren Jones, Jones does need help. I think that Darren Waller uh, signing was a little bit overrated just because he's injury prone. So you don't really know what you're gonna get out of him. Um, they just Hyatt too. Jalen Hyatt, yeah, but he's only a, he's a deep threat. That's about it. I don't think he's that good of a receiver. Um, I think Brian Day will, will continue to do a good job with Danny uh, Danny Dimes, but it's like I think teams have tape on how they're gonna use Danny Dimes um, this season. They're going to adjust. 
Um, things are rocky with Saquon right now. He's he's not even at, uh, at camp. Um, the defense got a little bit better. The secondary got better. I think they drafted a, a safety this year. But I think they have a tough schedule. So for that, I'm having to go going over a little bit. Eight or nine wins. I can see the uh, from the Giants. They might miss the playoffs this year. Um, last thing we got is the, the Washington Commanders. Yeah, what, what's the over under, my guy? Oh, my bad. Washington Commanders at six point five under. Um, I'm sorry, they got a tough schedule again. They, they uh, NFC East got a tough draw. They got to play the AFC East. And they got to play the NFC West. It's tough. You got uh the Seahawks. You got the Niners. You got the Dolphins, the Bills, um, the Jets, and I don't think Washington really comes out on any of those teams. I don't think they beat the Eagles. I don't think they beat the Cowboys. Um, great receiving core, promising a piece on defense. The only issue is the quarterback position. We don't know what Sam Howell is going to do. I think Jacoby Brissett's a perfectly average quarterback. I think he's honestly a pretty solid backup. Um, he'd be a great, actually, a great backup in my opinion. I think he's a good quarterback, but I don't think he's something that elevates them to seven, eight games. Um, so unless Sam Howell does some crazy stuff, I don't see them doing much. Um, so I got them going five and twelve right now. So I'll go under. I'm gonna go under. I got them going six and eleven. I think Sam Howell is gonna struggle his first year, even though they have those elite weapons. The offense line is mid. The running uh, running game is gonna be mid. Um, the defense has promised. They got they drafted Emmanuel Forbes this year. Um, they have a good defensive line. I think the secondary still needs a little bit more work. Uh, we don't know what's gonna happen with Chase Young. They have too many questions. I think they got to go under. Yeah, I'm gonna go under. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get them six as well. All right, let's move on to the wide receiver tier This is the last topic of the podcast today. I'm gonna put the wide receivers on my screen, and we're gonna rank them. Um, I think we may have to do a little bit of maintenance here uh, to to uh, get this tier together, but I think we have most of it done now. I think no, I think we're good. I think the only, the only thing I would say is below mid, or add another one that's below mid. Just put you could do add another tier and do below mid and bad. So you're so small on my screen, bro. Hey, Jaden, what do you feel like? Do you think you should, we should add a tier called below mid? Below mid? Like, there's, I mean, is there, should we put something between mid and bad? Because I'm not going to lie. Some of these un, like, un, unproven rookie receivers, I'm not going to put them in bad because I don't know what they're going to be. That's why I said we should make a tier for rookies, bro. But rookies, I don't know. You gotta, <laughs> yeah, you I, I get what Max is bit. Yeah. I'm not going to call them straight bad with ever getting a snap. Yeah. That's why we have a rookie tier. I, I don't I don't know what you like. It just It's just a placeholder until we see what they do. We can do a tier. We can do a, another one um, in the middle of the season and right, like right, that. Right, right. You can do a rookie too, I guess. Oops. You got bad in the middle, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to fix it. And what I come do so often. <laughs> Go down. We, we can do Orient. All right. I'm going to put rookies over mid. All right, since we have a top five elite, great, good rookies, mid and bad. All right, let's do um, this first. Let's just grab let's grab some of the guaranteed top five. So Jettas. Let's get Jay Jettas over here. He's the best receiver in the league. Let's try to let's try to get this order a little bit, Max. Let's try to get this order. I think Jay Jettas is the best second the best receiver in the league. Tyreek, Tyreek's two. I think that Devontae Adams is two, personally. Uh, so um, I think it's Tyreek, Devontae Adams, and Jamar. Those are the top four. Is that fair? Jaden, who do you think the second best receiver in the league? I feel like Devontae offers more. He's a better route runner. His hands are better. I think Tyreek Hill just literally beats him with speed. But I'm yeah, like, I think speed's, speed's enough in this Speed case. Is, a, is an important part, though. But I, yeah, I, I but in every other aspect of the wide receiver, being a wide receiver, I think, I think Devontae Adams is better than him. Who's, who's better, Jaden? I'll, I'll put Tay over uh, Tyreek Hill. Better at ball control, you know, I mean, body control, like everything, bro. Tyreek's year last year was insane. I'm sorry. And you can blame it to speed, but he was insane last year. So that Devontae Adams had a good year too, and also like I think I think Devontae Adams is better than the red zone too, because he's bigger. Will you give me more reasons to put him over him? Like I don't know what you. Uh, what I'm I'm sorry. Like he doesn't get Tyreek. Is, 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 is AJ Brown going in uh, the the top five? I, I, I think, think he's a little bit outside. I think he's a little bit outside. I think Diggs is five. Yeah, I also think Diggs is five. Uh, well, I'm trying to find Tyreek Hill right here. Uh, Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill. Where are I you, think bro? He's at the bottom. Like all the way at the bottom. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there, there, there he is. There he is. Uh, right. Jamar's dead middle. Yeah, I think Jamar is fourth best receiver in the league. Yep. Then I think Diggs is five. His hands, his hands still need work out in my he had, he had a lot of drops. He'd be having some drops sometimes. Um you, it's, the conversation is probably Diggs or AJ Brown. Yes, I agree. Um AJ I Brown. think AJ Brown had a better year last year, but I think he has more help. 
He has a better offensive line. He has a better running game. Um, technically, last year he had the better quarterback. Uh, Stephon. Down, bottom row, bottom row, bottom row, bottom row, bottom row. There, I see him. All right, so I think I do think AJ Brown is the, the first guy in great though. Yeah, I, I also think that. But I also think AJ Brown is elite receiver as well. That's why I don't want to have, you know. You could just you don't have to call it top five then. You could just call it elite. We can rank it itself. Okay, we could put we could put uh, t- we can take the the, the uh. Take top five. That's fine. That's fine. I'm cool with that. I think AJ Brown is over Jamar Chase personally. Oh, why? <laughs> bro, d- did you see what he was he did in, in the Super Bowl, bro? Like, yeah, I, I feel like that stuff matters, bro. No, it does, but look at the, the receiver they were the cornerbacks he was going against, bro. Respectfully. Okay. Uh, He's also playing next to uh, uh, Devonta Smith, by the way. Darnell Mooney next. Stop it. Uh so I that's, that's probably it for elite though. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, I think Cooper Cutter is elite. I think Cooper Cutter is elite. No. Oh, that's Amara. Okay, let me stop because he, he. You like Amara that much? No, nah, no, nah, he's about to. I was about to get crazy already. I think there's one more. Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me make sure. Let me make sure. Wasn't Cooper Cup like injured the whole year though? Yeah, but when he was, he was putting up crazy. When he was on the on the field, he was playing up oh, crazy okay, production. Okay, 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 okay. I get he's getting older. Am I? No. What? Beyonce Hawkins? No. He's got to be first guy and good then. Great. Great. great yeah. Great. I, 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 I don't know. AJ Brown. I feel like AJ Brown is there. Is that? No, AJ, AJ Brown's, Brown's right here. We're good. Oh, you put him in elite. Yeah, yeah. Elite. is there anyone else? Not Mike Evans. Not Jalen Waddle. Where is where is uh DeAndre Hopkins? Uh, second row, second second person, second row. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's hard to see these people. On. Uh, CD uh, Lamb uh, is CD Lamb next? Seven, eight. Put CD Lamb up there. I don't think he's next. There's someone. He's in the middle of the first row. I see CD Lamb, but I'm just trying to say yeah. like where's. Oh, I thought you meant he's literally in the middle of elite. I was confused. Uh. DK is up here. In DK great. or CD Lamb? In great or, or elite? I, I think CD above DK. Oh, bro, I, it, it's, I really can't see. Oh, okay. This is great. DK is up here. I think Amon Ra's in this tier. No, he's not. Yes, he is. DK, DK and CD Lamb are better than Amon Ra. That's fine, but he's in this great tier. You can put him sure. a, a, like, below, below them in the same. Bro. Yeah, Amon Ra's in the great tier. He's not here, but he's up here. Oh, hold on. Let me. Let me uh, I think DJ Moore is better than Amon Ra. Yes. Uh yes. Yes, I agree. But still, Amara deserves to be up here. Debo is Debo in here? Mm-hmm. Bro, that was, that was, that as a receiver, Debo's gonna be in probably good. That's a oh my game. gosh, you're nasty. Debo's not <laughs> Debo's tough. Debo because Debo gets a lot of his stuff off running the football. Yeah, Debo's an athlete, bro. He's not a good receiver. Oh, he's not a great receiver. Like he's an S tier athlete. He's an S tier football player. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he Yeah, fa- player, facts. But, uh, yeah, I don't know receiving wise. I put him up high though. What about Cameron Calvin Really? Is he I, I mean he hasn't played in two years, but Put him on raw. Put, please put him on raw and great. We can move it around later. We don't got to look for it. I think Mike Evans is still in great. Mike Evans is still a great receiver. Crazy? Is Mike Evans not better than Mara? Yes, I'm just saying. Throw guys up here. We'll sort them later. Okay. Let's just, I, I don't want him to be too high. I just want. I just want to you know. Where's I don't know. I, ooh, I think I put. I think in the last one I put Amon Ra above him, and I might have to go back to that. But we'll we'll keep going. It's fine. We'll we'll keep talking about it. Uh, is Mike Evans in this category? Not Mike Evans. Uh, Mike Williams not up this high. Amari Cooper. Is he great or no? Mm. I think he's top of good, maybe. Where's McLaurin at? True. No, McLaurin's a great receiver. Terry, Terry and T. Terry and T are right next to each other. Yep, bottom right. But they both are better. They're both better than Amara, by the way. Mm. Yes. I don't think they Terry, are. I don't think Terry is. Yeah, what? I don't think I Bro, think. Terry McLaurin has never hit a quarterback ever in, in his entire career, and he's produced – Every single year, I'm not. Right, we're not going with that. He's got a pretty solid receiving core. You got other guys to go guard. Bro, stop it. He just got uh, he just got Curtis Samuel two years ago, or two two or three years ago. He just got uh, what's what's his name? How John, John Dawson. How old do you think Terry McLaurin is? Terry McLaurin been in the league for like four years. Four years. So two or three years ago, he got Curtis Samuel. So majority. Maybe two. It's probably two. And I, I had a lot. John Dawson was injured for for he missed seven games last year. So oh, he played seven games last year. I think Amon Ra might be hot, but I'm sorry. Amon Ra's not better than Terry McLaurin. I'm not gonna lie. I can't give you that, Max. I feel like that's kind of nasty. Uh, it's okay. That's fine. DJ Moore is a great receiver. Great. He's better than Amon Ra. Put DJ Moore ahead of him. I. One two. Is Higgins better than Terry McLaurin? No. No. What? One two three four. Five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, I think, uh, yeah, never mind. Where is Chris Olave? Did you move Chris Olave up here? 
He's not. He's not. He's not. He's not great. Rookie's he's not great. great. He's, he's not great. great. He's I not great. He has to be top of good then. Amari Cooper's better than him. Chris Godwin's better than him. I don't. I don't. I don't think Chris Godwin is better than Amari Ra. Uh, no, no, no. I'm saying better than uh, Chris Olave. Yes. Uh, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson might be in great. I'm sorry. Garrett Wilson might be oh, okay. I might be projecting. Top, of, top of good. Top of good. Uh, he's, he, I was projecting. I think he's going to be great, too. You know, I feel like he's going to be one of the best oh, in leadership. Waddle. What are we doing? Get Jalen Waddle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jalen Waddle is also better than tomorrow. I'm not. I'm, Hold on a sec. Put him in great, yeah. Is he better than T? No, nah, I think he's better than T. I ain't going to lie. Nah, 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 T is gonna grab everything, bro. Like, I, yeah, I, but I, like T, even though he plays with Jamar Chase, like when he went, when Jamar Chase went down this year, he was tough. He was great. But you say something about Jalen Waddle. His first year, he was great. You know, um, he he had good years. He played next. I mean, good a good year this year. Playing next uh, next uh, Tyreek Hill. So, I, I think I think Jalen Waddle is better than T Higgins right now. But I, I ain't gonna. I can see it. I can see you putting T T Higgins over him. Um. So we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You think we should like just search for players or just like whoever comes up like first? I, I really feel like we should drop Amara down a little bit, but hey. I'm I'm saying though, um I think Deontay Johnson is a good receiver. Sorry. I feel like we should uh, just like, go go in order of the of the thing instead of just like searching for players. Okay, okay. Brandon 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 Cush is also a good receiver. And okay. we're gonna drop these uh rookies this rookie down a little bit. Jay Latif's got a huge Deontay Johnson fandom. That we showed that last time. I don't know why. Don't Is know he not good? Happened. What are we talking about? He's good, but I'm sorry. There's gonna be a couple names we're gonna have a fight about. Like last time. Uh I think I think Keenan Allen is Keenan Allen is looking fell off a cliff. He, uh, he's low, he's low good. He's low good. Mike Mike Williams. He's not, he's not close to mid though. Uh I think Mike Williams is better than um Deontay Johnson. Is I think Jerry Judy's good. Yeah, yeah. Jerry Judy's good. Uh, Christian Kirk is good. Is that Ayuk next? I I think Ayuk Ayuk is also good. Low good, low good, low good. I think Calvin Ridley is good. Now we gonna. I think Calvin Ridley is gonna be better than Keenan Allen. Hold on, just just well, let's put also let's bearing Brandon Cooks. Let's put guys in categories and then we'll go from there. Is that fine? Okay. Let's yeah. Get yeah. All these guys. Uh, what are we doing with Chris Godwin? Is Godwin great? I think Godwin no. is great. No. Like low end great. I think he's the last. No. Guy. Top of no. good. How? Good, not, like, no. that makes no sense. First of all, how is this your list? It's a com- it's a community list. You, I just can't say something. Oh no, that's wrong. Okay. No, like, I, I, I don't agree. I'm just saying I don't agree. Jay, Max, what's your take? Max, I'll, I'll I'll put him. If Max wants to put him there, I'll, I'll put him there. Thank you. I appreciate that. Last guy. Great. Last guy. He was injured last year. When he had Tom Brady, he was. I, I'm My point that. exactly. Look at bro, Chris Godwin, quarterback. This is gonna be trash. So I don't know why you think he's gonna be great this year. Bro, Terry McLaurin's bro. quarterback's trash. You just said it. Terry McLaurin's quarterback. He's trash. better. Terry McLaurin is better than him. He's quarterback proof. Yeah, God, that's Chris, that's true. Max, 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 Max Evans on the other side. So he's getting number two coverage all the time. Bro, his quarterback is Baker Mayfield. Yeah. I'm what sorry. the fuck? I'm what sorry. do you mean? Yeah, Max. You gotta throw the football because they don't got a running back either. I think he'll produce this year. I'm like, I think the the Tampa Bay wide receiver duo is old. I'm sorry, it's old, but it's still very good. Please what do you think? Claypool bad. I'm tired of looking, yeah, looking at him. Unfortunately, he's right. Clay's Claypool is low. Um, Jerry Judy. Do we put Jerry Judy in good? I feel like he's gonna have a year. I like Jerry Judy a lot. Where's bro at? Uh, not, oh, here you go. I yeah. see him. Devontae Smith. Devontae. I think Jerry Judy's better than Brandon. Devontae, Devontae, Devontae Smith. Could Devontae look Smith's in good. I feel like he look. He can be great. Man. I think I would rather have Garrett Wilson than Devontae Smith. Sorry. Where's he at? Oh, uh, Christian Kirk still. Christian Kirk is first, first guy, first, first row, first row. Chris Olave is in good. Christian Kirk gonna be better than uh, Gary Wilson. We'll, we'll decide it later. We'll decide it later. Amari Cooper is he, Amari Cooper should be better than him, in my opinion. Christian, Christian Kirk. Kirk? Chris, I'll, I'll put Christian Kirk behind Deontay Johnson. Oh uh, wait, what are we doing? Sorry, Calvin Ridley's better than Deontay Johnson. I thought oh. we was going to play later. We, we are, we are, but I'm just saying he hasn't played in like two yeah, years. Yeah, so, I mean. Uh, Donovan Milne, is is he a good receiver? I think Donovan Milne is good. I think he's a good receiver, but you could put him. I don't think he's mid. I'm, I don't so. think he's mid. He, I so, think he's good. I, you could put him last guy in good, but you also got Chris Olave on here too. He deserves to be good. Chris Olave. Chris Olave is better than everybody on his, on his, on his thing besides like. I think Garrett Wilson is a better receiver, I think. I put Garrett Wilson above Devontae. 
Uh, Jay, what do you think? You said what? He's going to be a one this year. He's going to be a one this year. Olave, Garrett Wilson, and Devontae Smith. One, two, three. Rank them. Garrett Wilson is not – why are you putting Garrett Wilson on top of good? So, th- I'm guessing this is going into next year. Yeah. It is. Yeah, what do you think? Why is my thing I, – I I don't know. How does mean this is kind of disingenuous? Because, like, Jahan Dawson is going to be a good receiver next year. I, I can promise you that. Is average a better word to call it? I mean, it's fine. Okay. Uh, average. Um, did y'all hey. hear – Jay, Garrett Wilson, Devontae Smith, Chris Olave. Rank them one, two, three. Bro, I'm high on Devontae Smith. I think Devontae Smith is better than all of them. Bro, are we talking Are we talking about going into next year? Yeah. Who's I'll a better probably, receiver? I'll, I'll put Devontae Smith, then Garrett Wilson. Teeth, what do you think? Uh, What was the question? Smith, Olave, Wilson. One, two, three. Rank them. Smith, Olave, Wilson. Uh, Wilson, Smith, Olave. Okay. I think so, it's Smith, Smith, Wilson, all out there. I got Wilson. Is Juju Smith Sutra mid or bad? Mid. Mid. He, he's gonna be he's gonna be wide receiver one, low key. Uh JSN, Jaden Reed right there. Jonathan Ming Jonathan Mingo's a rookie too, right? Jaden Reed. I think Rashad Reed. Rashad Bim is mid as shit. Yeah. Jaden Did, Reed. Gabe Davis mid as shit. Go just go rookies, Steve. Just go rookies. Uh you got three guys second row. Reed, Mingo, and Downs are all rookies. Okay. First three guys, right? Isn't Jonathan Mingo a rookie? Yes, he is. Uh, Cedric Tillman, rookie too. You got his rookie picture. Am I tweaking? Is that an edit or is that actually Josh Downs? I thought he was a rookie. Uh, Cedric Tillman, first guy on the thing. He's also a rookie. So, I'm not going to lie. If we're doing it like this, why are rookies even on the tier list? That's what I'm saying. I, I That's why I would rather not have Drake Warner is going to be good. I don't have not a rookie tier, but it's fine. We're good. Tank Dell. Tank Dell and what? Trey Palmer, too? Oh, that's not. Scott Moore's mid. Uh, Tank Dell. Loki Scott Moore. He had a bad year last year. I'm sorry. Rookies, rookies should be under bad then. Uh, Mervin Mims. Melvin Mims. Sorry. I don't, I don't even know what you're talking about. You got Kayshawn Boutte, Trey Parker, and uh, Melvin Mims. Oh, you could put down there. This is OD people. Dear God. Yeah, you got a lot of people. It's fantasy. So I think Jahan Dawson's going to be good, respectfully. Is going to be good or is? He is good. And he was good last year. He's going to be good this year. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, I think Garrett Wilson will be in that great echelon next year. I think Marquise Brown is good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Debo, 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 Debo. We, we've gone too far. Debo's now up here. I look, you think, like, bro, we, like, some of these people are not on the same tier. Like, Gary Wilson is not in the same tier as John Hodgson. I do think I do think Debo's a better receiver than Brandon Ayuk, though. No, he's not. I think Debo's a better receiver than Brandon Ayuk. No, he's not. Uh, Chris Godwin's got to go somewhere. So you could put Chris Godwin top of good if you want, but Chris Godwin should be up there. I ain't going to lie. He is definitely not better. He is definitely not better than uh, Brandon Ayuk. George Pickens is a good receiver. Um, Corlin yeah. Sutton is mid as shit, but okay, I guess. What do you think about uh, Chris Godwin? Where's Chris Godwin go? <laughs> I think Odell mid at this point in his career. It just hasn't. He hasn't played, but he's still better than Juju. Yeah, Juju's like very. Michael good. Pittman is good. Michael Thomas is. Yeah, good. we are going. We are going to have to. Uh... I don't really like this. Uh, this, this, this setup. Yeah, the setup is pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie. It's too. It's like that's too general. Good is too general, bro. Traylon Burks, mid. Trey Tyler Boyd. So like, Tyler Boyd is a good receiver. Traylon Burks, low key bad. I'm sorry. All right. Ho- well, do y'all want to think about making a, a like another tier or no? Kishan Boutte, rookie. I don't know. I just finished it out. This this already getting late. I gotta. Michael Gallup is close to being bad. He's low mid. Uh, we got Jacoby Myers is a good receiver. What? No, Jacoby Myers is not in the same conversation as those guys. Um, but he's gonna be higher than this. I think he's better than Odell at this point. Down people Jones was good last year. Like I don't even know. Like this is too many people. Bro. DPJ, but DPJ is not better than a lot of. Like you could put him at mid to bad. I don't think Sky Moore is in that mid conversation. Sky Moore had a bad year, man. 
Michael Thomas. Oh man. Didn't Michael Thomas. I don't know where to put Michael Thomas. Bro, mid. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, above, yeah, I think he's above Odell though. Yeah, probably. All right, we're gonna we're gonna put this in there. We're gonna just organize it, bro. Um later in a minute, in a minute. Uh I'm counting um James Williams a rookie. He barely played. Elijah Moore is mid. Um Corlin Sutton is mid. Yeah, Christian Watson. Christian Watson is you can honestly call him a rookie. He's still unproven. He yeah. was good. He didn't play. All right, he so he, he he did play, but barely though. Um so uh uh, I'm Let's, wrong, go wrong. Good. Let's go good. Good. Go good first. Are we fine with this lineup? No. I don't think. That's right. Great. I mean, great. I mean, great. Oh, yeah. Great is fine. That's I fine. think Mike Evans is too high, but whatever. You think, I think Terry, you think Terry McLaurin better than him? I think I, he is. I don't think Terry McLaurin is that high, so it's whatever. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I don't think my I think Mike Evans is about to hit the tail in his career. I think Amon Ra is better than Mike Evans. That's what I'm. Yeah, uh, you're high on Amon Ra, bro. That's what I'm saying. I don't even. I don't like the Lions. Amon Ra's a dog, though. Amon Ra over Garrett Wilson. Yes. Garrett Wilson, Chris oh, Godwin, Devontae right. Smith. I'm sorry, Amon Ra comfortably over Garrett Wilson. Is is Chris Godwin? Is Chris Godwin over Devontae Smith? Yes, comfortably. Amari Cooper over Christian Curry, probably. Chris Godwin, I think, still could be throwing that great too, but you don't want that. So, I think Christian Kirk's below Mike Williams and Calvin Ridley. I like Christian Kirk a lot, but I don't think he's that. Yeah, high. I also think that as well. He's not going to be the wide receiver one this year. Yeah, Chris Olave yeah. better than Christian Kirk? Yeah, it's probably. Mm, I think it's close, but yeah, I'll go Olave. I'd rather have Olave. Stop. Yante it Johnson. Stops. It stops there. Brandon Cooks or Brandon Cooks is, is better than Keenan Allen? No. Whoa. No. Yes. Jerry no. Judy's better than both of them. Jerry Judy's better than both of them. Yeah, we can put Jerry Judy right there. Brandon Ayuk. Is Brandon Ayuk or Donovan Mooney? Ayuk. Ayuk's better than Mooney. I like I love Mooney, but I think I I'd rather have Drake Ayuk. London. I think he's I think Drake London's better than Mooney. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Drake London had a great year last year. He started great, but I think both other the other three receivers overtook him very fast. All right, I think Debo is definitely better than Jahan Dawson. Debo's better. Debo's better than I think up to Drake London. I think Debo's better than Drake London. I think Debo is probably better than Darnell Mooney. I think so too. I put Debo above Brandon Ayuk. That's fine. I would uh, put nah. Debo maybe over Brandon Cooks. Tyler Lockett is way too low on this. Jay, Debo. Jake, Jay, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Debo too low? Is I'm not looking at the screen. I'm not. Is Debo in good? You think Debo should be above Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Cooks, Keenan Allen? Yes, I don't yeah. think. I, I don't I think. I agree. I'm sorry. Yeah. Debo should be right behind Jerry Judy. He's not really a receiver, but whatever. Um, I, I think uh, Michael Pittman is better than Pickens. Michael Pittman's better than everyone above Marquise Brown. Or better uh, up to Marquise. Yeah, but right there. In my Marquise opinion. Brown or George Pickens? Going into this region, I'm picking Marquise Brown. I, I mean, George Pickens. I think Pickens as well. Jahan Dawson or Marquise Brown? Going into the future. I think, I mean, going into the future, going into this year, right? Yeah. Marquise Brown. I think one more year. Okay, Tyler Boyd is in the back end of good. Tyler Boyd's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Jaboy, Jacoby Myers is low-key. He had one year good year. Michael Thomas, I think Donald Pooley Jones is better. At this point in their careers, I'm not going to lie. I don't know. He's high. He yeah. had a great year. He had 980 yards last year. Um, oh, Corlin Sun's too low. Corlin Sun's better than Gallup, Burks, Sky Moore, Gabe Davis, in my opinion. Corlin, Corlin Sun better than, better than uh, Jerry Judy. Yeah. I mean, Juju Smith. I, I think Elijah, Elijah Moore is too low in this one. Elijah Moore is low key a dog. Really? Is he? I think so. He didn't get many touches. He didn't get in the offense. They literally just didn't put him in the offense. Um, Sky Moore is not better than um, Sky Moore. Might be the end of this. Traylon Burks and Sky Moore are the last two guys in this tier. Especially with his quarterback situation next year, he's going to be bad. I think Rashad Bateman's better than uh, Juju. Is that crazy? I ain't gonna. Nico Collins should be lower too. I don't know if he's better Uh, lower than these. Collins, he performed pretty well with having Davis Mills. That's fine if you put him a little bit higher, but uh Okay, you can put yeah, the Mark on me. I'm okay with this right now. Elijah Moore, Michael Gallup, uh, Michael Gore, Michael Gallup or Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore. Gabe Davis or Rashad Bateman. I'm gonna go with Gabe maybe Davis. Michael, maybe Michael Gallup, to be honest. I don't know. Gabe maybe Davis or uh 
Uh, Gabe Davis or Rashad Bateman? Rashad Bateman, in my opinion. I'm cool either way, though. This this bottom area, I'm cool. Okay, yeah. Anything else here? Yeah. Do you want to write rookies real quick? Uh, sure. If we're doing it like this, though, I think J-Mo and Christian Watson. I think Zay Flowers is number one. Well, no. J- J- Jackson and Jacob. Zay Flowers. Are we putting Watson and Jamison in there? Yeah. I think both, I mean, of, both those guys are better. I think JSN's one. I think those two guys are better than anyone else in here. Uh, I, I don't know. I think we could throw them up in mid and just call it a day. Yeah, I'm not gonna about to, I'm not about to debate that. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Jackson, uh, Zay Flowers, so, Jordan Addison, Quentin Johnson. Uh, I think Jonathan Mayo gonna be better than Jaden Reed. Well, Christian Watson um, above like Elijah Moore. I think. I I don't know where you want to put JMO. JMO is just too unproven. Yeah, he has not done anything. Yeah. I also think he's I think he'd be better than Michael Gallup and Rashad Bateman. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Marvin Mims, Trey Trey Parker's last. I think. I think Jaden Reed gets. I think Jaden Reed gets touched. Um, I think he gets on the field. A lot. I think Josh Allen's better than him. I think uh, Rasheed Rice is gonna go a bit lower. Cause Sean Boutte, yeah. our potential might be lower. I think Cedric Tillman yeah. got to be at the end of this list. I think Jaden Reed gets production this year because it's Jordan Love, and they'd have no other receivers besides uh, Pickens. I think I think uh, Jonathan Mingo. Who do you, who Jonathan Mingo go to? You think Tate Dale is better than Jaden Reed? I personally do. I think Jaden Reed's low, so I'm biased a little bit, but I don't think Josh Downs better than him. I don't think Jonathan Mingo is better than him. I put Tank, Tank Dell higher. Tank Dell's got speed. He's got yak. I put Tank Dell and uh, Jaden Reed both of yeah above both those guys. Is well, I'm not. I, I, I haven't watched a lot of Jaden Reed, so I can't. I can't comment. Yeah, so can, Jalen Hyatt, yeah. this this pick looks, looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I like um, him better, but he won't get. I think Addison will obviously get more touches. All right, that's how wide receiver chill is. It's our second time doing this, so. This is going to, have to be it. We don't know ball. We don't know ball. Give let, let us know your comments about the list. Um, that was the end of the episode thirty four. We just got to the hour and thirty minutes. If you made this far, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more. Give us your comments on the wide receiver tier list. Anything else we talked about today? Um, love y'all, man. We we out. Appreciate it.